a medical writer by choice i would say and i have an experience of around 8 years in the field so at uracos i'm working as a medical writer and uh, just to give you a brief background i have done my masters in pediatric dentistry after which i practiced in a hospital i treated some patients and then later switched to the academic field i have worked as a medical editor for some time and now switched my role again to work as a medical writer so uh, turacos is a medical communications company and here i am responsible for the learning and development department okay so apart from providing writing services our medical uh, our learning and development department uh, we take responsibility of offering medical writing trainings and workshops to keep the medical fraternity and professionals from the pharmaceutical industry updated on the latest guidelines or the ethical issues or the importance of crafting accurate medical content for the healthcare industry so today i would show you how we have strategically integrated some ai tools in our scientific writing experience we'll share our experience based on some case studies so just to take you through the contents at a glance i'll tell you how science is really evolving at lightning speed and also we'll evaluate the upsides and the downsides of generative ai in publishing world that's quite a good number so 64% have voted that yes they have used some generative ai tool for their work while 29% have never used any generative ai and 7% are not aware of these tools so we all know that artificial intelligence is already transforming the world and it has taken our industry by a storm now staying on top of technological advancements is crucial to remain relevant and competitive in the field and we all also know that these ai tools have a great potential in enhancing the efficiency accuracy and our work productivity but just like everything has two sides even ai is a double edged sword so now we have seen in our previous versions of the webinars which we have had on ai artificial intelligence that ai powered tools they can help scholars researchers or medical writers in conducting comprehensive literature reviews in generating literature summaries in maybe organizing references and thus overall facilitating the writing process so where is the problem now so now this is why turacos has taken an initiative the ai mw brain trust initiative and this initiative aims to gather insights experiences and challenges faced in using ai and some trustworthy solutions to improve the efficiency of different generative ai tools now this ai mw brain trust this is an ai focused community of like minded medical writers who are interested in understanding and exploring the opportunities that are offered by generative ai in medical writing and now the ai mw brain trust has planned several small tangible measurable activities for the next few months and each one of you sitting here can participate in these activities it is purely voluntary but yes there is definitely an eligibility criteria to join this ai mw brain trust okay so we have a tie 38% of you have used it for literature search and review and again 38% have used it for editing and paraphrasing okay 16% of you have used it for summarizing text while 9% have used it for creating illustrations and visualization small example that would help you also understand how these tools actually work so suppose we have a task suppose we need to do a literature search how would we go about it like going by the conventional method what would i do is i would uh, go to different databases i would search different databases for my topic or maybe i would put my keyword over there and then after a lot of skimming say i come across 38 relevant papers but again the point to be noted is to reach to those 38 papers i had to skim through a lot of papers i mean around say 4000 to 5000 also depending on my topic of interest right now instead if suppose we are using these tools then how these ai tools 
would benefit us is see these tools are based on machine learning they utilize machine learning okay which uh, again may be based on active learning or passive learning so once you mark one paper as relevant on these tools they will automatically uh, you know identify and give you papers which are similar to that so see you don't have to go through all 5000 papers maybe at the maximum you just have to go through say 300 to 400 papers and you can come to those 38 papers right so see just how uh, you know by automating this task we have reduced our time taken we have reduced our efforts and we have also made an impact on our productivity now let us consider the two tools connected papers and cite first let us look into the connected papers see connected papers works by building a graph of similar papers in the field okay and it is based on similarity metric which is based on the concept of co citation and bibliographic coupling now what is this is uh, it identifies two research papers that have more number of overlapping papers okay like more overlapping citations more overlapping references then it would identify that paper as the relevant one and produce it and now how it does all this it analyzes an order of around 50000 papers and then selects a few dozen with the strongest connections to their origin okay so this was the working of connected papers now on the other hand how does your tool site work now this is a next generation citation tool that gives qualitative citations uh, the smart citation index is used and the papers are categorized based on that now on the other hand what we got like what was our interpretation of cite was now this tool works on subjective interpretation of citations like it may not always align with the intended meaning of the citations because again this is a very good uh, sorry this is a very big limitation as i already told you in the first slide right this is just a tool this is not a human so it may not understand the context completely and also it has dependency on available data because again the database is limited so no abstracts were generated for a few papers which has been cited in your uh, chosen paper and the uh, derived work will give you a uh, idea about the papers where the paper you have chosen has been cited so this will make your work uh, very easy uh, so it gives us idea where the uh, relatable articles are present and we can go through and it will help us to make our work easy uh, there are a few drawbacks like firstly uh, i found it a little tedious because it is not allowing us to use any filters uh because uh, it is creating the data the map i would say on the basis of uh, tools understanding and not on the basis of what we want so basically it is creating a map say for example between 2000 and 2017 but i want the research papers which are published after 2022 and another thing i told you when i uh started this webinar that these tools they work on probabilistic model and that is why there is this case of hallucinated references as i just gave you an example uh see 2024 is not even here and we are getting references it is quoting references stating here as 2024 so again these hallucinated references again you need human experience and you know human intervention you simply cannot rely on these tools you yourself need to be abreast with the latest rit- literature because ultimately you all must have heard prompting is very important so even to be able to give that prompt to get those uh, relevant papers you need to be you know thorough need to be updated with the latest literature then only you would be prom- able to prompt the tool and utilize it efficiently so again your knowledge and expertise would play a role here so uh, you know it is very important to strike a balance between human intervention and automating your tasks right now technology is not good enough to put blinded trust over it you always need to double check what the tool is giving you okay and so i would say it is 
good like you leverage ai to augment human capabilities and not replace them this is what i would say based on our experience let us explore these tools together and if at all you are interested in joining us kindly contact this is my email id neha.neharika@duracos.com our team will then get back to you with the details of all the rules and regulations for this activity how they have to be used the parameters that have to be evaluated all this would be shared with you and you are all good to go you can start using these tools now the session is open for question and answers and i would request you all in case you have any questions you can type in the chat box and i am here to answer your queries yes results of other tools will also be available we were short of time so in this session we just thought of covering the first two tools the literature search tool next time we would uh, cover the literature summarizing tools and editing tools so it's inferred that the reviewers are much needed even after ai yes how about its impact on medical writers job okay this is a very good question see what i feel is it is definitely going to have an impact on medical writers job but it is not going to take away your job because ultimately we have seen all through the presentation how human intervention is needed at each step but yes again another thing is there that humans who are not using ai would be replaced by humans who are using ai so it's better to you know get in touch with technology start using it learn how to use it why did you select these two tool among the eight okay see we are going to take you through all the eight tools that we selected but these two tools were selected because these were the literature search tools that we worked on two literature search tools we had chosen two literature summarizing tools two editing tools and two tools for visualization thank you everybody thanks a lot for your valuable time and thank you for attending this session